I do most of my experience has been uh, related with design, US design and US research in the last nine years, I would say. Uh, most of my experience is working with robotics, with assistant robots and industrial robots, creating uh, these scenarios for the robots' interaction and as well the interfaces and all the applications to control or manipulate the robots. Uh, so since I moved to Canada, uh, I always I've been a lover of video games and I have, I have worked for QA and video games and marketing uh, research as well. But now it's like when I move here and I feel like, okay, what is the difference between VR, mixed, virtual reality, mixed reality, and augmented reality? Well, that's why I'm jumping you all in exactly <laughs> right now so fast in this slide. Uh, I want to present the, to keep those questions that I presented at the beginning, uh, why we see all the other possibilities when I'm presenting all the use cases and, and the scenarios for a big different applications in different industries and fields. Uh, if I want to explain this, I would say for virtual reality, how many of you know Pokemon Go? Or <laughs> so in virtual reality, it is like you are inside of the Pokemon world. You are inside. Wherever you turn, everything is colors, everything has the logic and the feeling, the scenario of Pokemon Go. In mixed reality, Oh, no, in augmented reality is the actual Pokemon Go that we know. So you see some parts, some of the elements of the reality, right? Like the streets or something that you can <coughs> just see with your camera. And you just see something digital that is um, linked to that reality. But they are not interacting with that reality. So you see in your reality something digital, right? And in mixed reality, that element interacts with your reality. So you can see how uh, all those elements can, um, uh, interactions that you do with that uh, experience can affect how some elements relate to each other or something. So for example, in augmented reality, uh, the Pokemon Go, as, as you see, you are, I don't know, you are walking the street and you see a bus stop. And you see the Pokemon, but if a bus comes by, and it drops, so <laughs> like you still see nothing happens to the Pokemon, right? But in this reality, could be a possibility like like the Pokemon getting the bus or something, or tells you which bus to take or something. It's, it's totally. Is it clear? Really? Yes. Okay. So. The adoption of all those technologies is expensive. Very expensive uh, experiences and very expensive things. Normally, they start many years ago and they are like super expensive. Only very few early adopters have the money to buy it <laughs> or to use it. Many cases are like institutions, universities uh, that adopt these technologies in their research uh, programs and. and and studies, uh, but but same happened with many other technologies with AR, VR, that many people is getting really into it. Like you know, after just a few years, um, buying any VR device, something was around 900 if it was cheap, and now just this week it was a play. Okay, and Oculus Go. The Oculus Go, and it's about you can get now one for about 300 something. So it's like, it's getting there. And as we see also the augmented reality, it's getting more room actually <coughs> than the virtual reality. So depends on what is the project or your needs or what do you need this technology for, uh, you choose either one of the other. Okay, now, learning, how we do it. Sorry. A question, is a good example of augmented reality something like Google Glass, what Google Glass tried to do? And is there 
And if I, is there something coming out that's similar to Google Glass that's coming out in the market that, that we should look at? Like, okay, this is the next augmented reality thing. Mm -hmm. I am not totally aware if I follow Lens, but I have the, I, I'm going to. <laughs> Sorry. Google so, Lens is being used in industry. In oh, okay. Yeah. We have a, but it's just, it's yeah, it's just three, three sixty yeah. videos. No, but the snap goggles or whatever they're called. Oh, like the Instagram glasses, yeah, like yeah. the mask and the. Yeah, but they introduced some of that. I, I, I feel like because mobile phones is what everybody has nowadays, so a lot of development effort actually went into creating a house just uh, using the phone, and that's why you don't see a lot of just. Uh, um, a third party headset uh, for AR. Mm -hmm. So I, that's just um, that's what I observed. Yeah, for virtual reality and augmented reality, we have the first thing that maybe you think is all these things that you wear, the sea badges that you have to wear. But also you can you can have virtual reality in your phone and augmented reality. There are many of, of the phones that we have here have the possibility to <coughs> download a augmented reality applications. And you can just play with it and, and try to understand how is the user experience and how is their relationship in those scenarios with that technology. So, uh, so I don't know if you heard, I guess you know more than people about this than me, but uh, about learning, we know that after two weeks of learning something, what it stays with us uh, is 10% of what we have bread, 20% uh, of what we hear, or something like auditory stimulus, or something about 90% that we can recall and remind what we learned is when we were doing something. When we when we when we did it and we experienced it with all most of our senses. So you must learn better by doing. Um, Augmented and virtual reality, these are different types of examples for different projects. And there is one example for example for the Oculus that is first contact. It's a type of sort of game experience where you can go and manipulate many objects in a, a scenario when you are like in a space of type of sort of ship. Um, interacting with this robot and I don't know if you get the chance to see but here in this small frames is like he's doing exactly with his hands mm -hmm. what he's doing in the virtual world and it's the thing with this technology is very difficult to explain unless you try um, but this is, this is something that when I tried, I was very excited because you can apply all the logic that, that you have here. For example, if you want to teach a, a kid or in language, for example, learning, uh, if you want to uh, teach directions or positions, I don't know, like on top or in, outside, all these sort of things you can imagine it and that's just very Small example, but you can you can use this in many many different ways. And knowledge is an information gained through experience. So the more we get to experience any subject, any field, <laughs> for example, in this, if I if I were doing this and I can use my phone to recognize and read each one of these QR codes or I know I can manipulate a character, a 3D character, and just play with it. But unless you try it, it's very difficult to really, like, uh, what can I say, like, integrate that knowledge into it. What is this called? This is amazing. <laughs> this is a Hatsune Miku. Hatsune Miku is a Vocaloid. They call it Vocaloids in Japan. Uh, this is purely Vocaloids. Okay. Okay, this is purely a 3D a holographic character. Thousands go to their concerts yeah. just to see an holographic presentation. 
She's like a giant hologram during the concert, so they just she dances and sings and that kind yeah. of thing, right? Yeah. It's just like anime, but yeah. but it's very interesting. I attended one one short uh, presentation for a band, it's like a anime band, <laughs> and people it really goes insane. It's like a people, with... I don't know, like it's a real person. Um, there is. Oh, why is it so uh, What is the change that it represents? So normally, uh, humans are not easy as well to accept change, right? And how we interact with our world and all these technologies represent that, that change, that challenge. Uh, for science, I am presenting like this luster. Uh, in this clip, this is um laughter and pain glass. Oh. And this um this one is like they the students can can go and interact in a real lab so there are no safety issues, there are no concerns about what kind of mess they can do. Uh, they can even uh, try and how can say analyze salmonella samples. Uh, many things that no way are possible in, in real life. So we these are all the possibilities and all the the limitations that we have in real life, many of them are just not existent in the in the virtual world. This is, for example, the one for HoloLens. Oh, but okay, two. Okay. Uh, this is the inside part. Um, I don't know if any of you have experienced or have the chance to experience this thing. Uh, so, but basically you change the conditions of the heart and you see how it affects uh, how the blood or the rhythm of the heart, how all the parts of the heart change in their movement and... So, zooming in this hole. Yeah, this is the hole. This, for example, is just a virtual tee. So it's a t-shirt that has some very specific uh, um, how can we say like image and the phone normally recognizes that pattern and then shows an animation or something deep. So here you can see like all the organs, internal organs in this. But this is just with your phone and an application that recognizes that image and presents to you something, something extra. MG, can you manipulate that, or is it just like a like a display? Are you, are you, yeah, are you, are you able to, to to do anything with that? Uh, with this one, with the virtual T, I don't think so. I'm not sure. <coughs> uh, with the wireless, I think you can. I, I, you can alter alter the. This is also part of. It's not the same for you. This one is uh, inside part. Um, this one is also for all lens, but it's more like fully anatomic uh, This one is the glass brain project. This one, for example, represents all the breakthroughs in medicine and for mental, physical uh, rehabilitation uh, that those technologies present. Um, in this case, for example, the, the user can read the EEG. <coughs> Have you seen all these things that they place in their in their head and they can read the signals and how you react or how you perceive different images or different experiences um, but this one is also to treat people with Alzheimer's or some mental um, illness or disability and, and, and how you how the doctor also can get to see and analyze all the user responses to different how can you say uh, um, in industries like architecture, construction, gaming, I guess many of you are familiar with all these, um, what can you say, cases for architecture or design or decoration, IKEA application, when you can 
get to see your furniture. I, I want to buy this furniture and just with my phone try to put it in my living room or, or architecture or construction, like for the pipes or many, many other things. Um, game. This is Don the Ronda of Iran. That is one of the games in the company that I'm related to, Bistro. Uh, what remains of Edit Pinch. Uh, this is a game that I highly recommend, even if you don't have anything VR right now. If you have a PlayStation 4 or something, try to download it. And if not, try just to watch videos on YouTube. This is, this is an amazing, amazing, amazing game. It's really immersive. You feel like so involved and engaged with any single detail inside that game. It's amazing. Um, VR, AR, and MR are changing how we learn, how we work, and perhaps how we think. Um, this is the same same thing. Um, how you can work with different, like for example, when you are when they are assembling cars or any different in the factory um, scenarios. This is, for example, he's manipulating a satellite. So when you see, he gets to see to do this to something. Yeah. Doing this, he sort of disarms all the the system. Uh, when you put on a headset, uh, and information is coming to your eyes, your brain and your subconscious is processing all this information, and your body cannot tell totally if it is not real or not. So that's why you see all these funny videos of people trying VR and falling or screaming, <laughs> going crazy. And, but it, it happens a lot. It's like you think maybe it's just a few people that got the reaction, but when you are first trying it, you are you can feel a little bit disoriented. But it's because our bodies are not used 100% at the beginning to that technology. Once you try first, you can go and you can just. Oh, that's fine. That's totally normal. <laughs> this is my new reality now. Uh, so that's why I focus. <laughs> 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 so how can we use this technology in learning to make the knowledge transfer faster, easier, and more universal? So in this case, it's one of the Meta2 Meta technology demos. Uh, He is in a sort of video chat or holographic chat with a friend, and this friend is sending him, sharing with him an element in a digital world. So, so he is not present here, but he is sharing something like, I don't know, it could be, for example, doctor to doctor, the information, this is the case. Uh, this is the problem that we have detected. Uh, same, uh, with the same, with the same, uh, Mira to, uh, but this is to show how we can share um, all these scenarios and interact with each other. It's not only like an individual experience. We can get connected and, and interact with the same objects and the same reality. Um, you can do, you can learn, you can share. without words. <laughs> <laughs> so I found this one and I found it really pleasing at the same time, like nerve breaking. <laughs> because there is no way you can do this in your right? Like at least you won't try to do it in your real life. But here it's like you can do whatever. And you realize uh, me as a US researcher, all the people try to do that. And I try to break all the games doing that. Right. What if I do this? What if I take this object and put it, insert it in this <laughs> other place? And to see how not only the technology reacts to that, uh, but also just all the funny things or interesting uh, interactions that we can create in this universe. Um, this is a <laughs> GIF that I created for a presentation that I saw about um, neuroscience and AI and e-learning. Um, this is just like to start the conversation, to start the wondering in our heads this, this evening. Uh, 
So just start the conversation. Pretty much everything. If you have any questions, shoot me now. <laughs> <laughs>